Why don't you put your hands together? Let's give God some praise. This is Resurrection Sunday. I said this is Resurrection Sunday. Jesus got what up from the grave. Hallelujah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Woo. What a difference a year makes. Now, somebody ought to be shouting on that right now. What a difference a year has made. We are here at Clyde Warren Park on Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. I am your senior pastor, Richie Butler. It is so good to see you in, woo, <laughs> in person. Hey, hey. I'm excited. I'm overjoyed, just delighted. And also, this is the apple of my eye, my beloved wife, First Lady Nisha. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is so good to see you all face to face and to have you here with us today. You know, the word says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And so we are so glad you are here today to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I want you to know, so we want to continue to leverage our social media. So those of you who are here in person, go on and tweet, send out a communication, say, hey, it's happening at Clyde Warren Park. And St. Luke is up in the house here. And for those of you who are joining us virtually, we want you to know you can still chat. You can still engage. We're excited to have you with us this Sunday morning. And so real quick, we're going to get this thing started by doing what? We're going to open up with a word of prayer. And I'm going to invite Pastor Turnley, who is a praying machine, to come right now to pray. And as she comes, we want to remember Keith and Lisa Kennedy in the loss of their aunt, Katie Louise Jones Harris, and Howard and Elisa Denny in the loss of their mother and mother-in-law, Yvonne Denny. Pastor Turley, come on out. Get us going, get us going. Come on, prayer. saints of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into Warren Park that we have made the house of the Lord on today. Happy Resurrection Sunday to you. Let's give God praise for our first family one more time. Amen. It's prayer time in this place that we have made a sanctuary. Let us go to our God in prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we have the privilege and the honor to come to the CEO of the universe and call upon your name. Lord, we're thankful that you would not stay on that cross, but you came to save us. Thank you for resurrection power on this morning. Lord, we're asking you now to forgive us all of all of our sins and to create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Somebody came this morning needing a touch from you, Lord. We are thankful that your resurrection power is here today. It's here to heal somebody, Lord. It's here to deliver somebody, Lord God. It is here to lift up oppression and depression. Father, we are thankful, 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 thankful. And Lord, we thank you that you are a way maker. You are a mind regulator. And we came to hear a word from you this morning. God, remove from us anything that would hinder us from hearing what you have to say to us on today. So, Lord, we emoji you. <laughs> we friend you, Lord God. God, we share you, and we want you to know that we love you today. So have your way in this place. Touch our senior pastor and use him like a tomb in your hands. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it already is heaven and we'll be so glad to give your name all the glory honor and praise in jesus name come on somebody say amen and glorify your father praise the lord everybody 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Did anybody come to celebrate Jesus? Did anybody come to lift up the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? Come on, clap your hands. Come on, if you're glad that Jesus rose, just shout hallelujah.
Y'all ain't ready. Anybody grateful for what Jesus did for you? Can you lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord in this room? If you're really grateful for his sacrifice, if you know there's no one else that could have did it for you, come on and give him praise. About a savior that came from glory. How he gave his life at Calvary. He did it all just for me. They nailed him in his hands. They nailed him in his feet. They nailed him to a cross to die. And all the while, he was thinking of me. Because in those nails was every mistake I made. The thorns were formed from my life. The lashes you took, they were meant for me. But you told God you would take them instead. You agreed to do it. You agreed to die. You agreed to give your life to save mine. Oh, what a sacrifice you made for me. Knowing all that you would have to go you agree. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I heard an old story about a Savior that came. About a Savior that came from glory. How he gave his life. Just for me, just for me. They nailed him in. They nailed him in his hands. They nailed him in. They nailed him in his feet. They nailed him to a cross. And all the while, he was thinking. He was thinking of me. Cause in those nails. Was every mistake? Was every mistake I made? Born, born, born from my life. From my life. The lashes you took, they were meant for me. But you told God you would take it instead. You agreed to do it. You agreed to do it. You agreed. You agreed to die. You agreed.
clap your hands and say, You agree to give your life to save mine. To save mine. Oh, what a sacrifice. Oh,
God. I, God is good, y'all. Woo. Jesus. Hallelujah. Whew. Good morning, y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, y'all look good, y'all. I just want to say it is a blessing for all of y'all to be here and a blessing to be able to serve on this Easter Sunday. I come to you all this morning to deliver you the scripture from Mark chapter 16, verse 1 through 6, and it goes like so. When the Sabbath was over, Mary, Mag, Mary, the, the mother of James, and Salome, they, they brought spices so that they might go to anoint the Jesus' body. And early, early in the week, the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? See, when, when they looked up, the stone, it was very large. The stone had been rolled away. And as they entered the tomb, they, they saw a young man. He was dressed in white robe and sitting on the right side. He, they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, the, the boy said. He, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He has risen. He is not here. See in the place where they laid him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you all. And Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for this glorious day. This day that represents life. This day that represents hope. This day that represents true freedom. This day that represents salvation. God, we marvel at what you did, why you did it, and for who you did it for. People like us, who, some, who, who are some timey when it comes to you, people like us, who choose our own path as opposed to the plans you have for us. So we celebrate on this Resurrection Sunday your love, we celebrate on this Resurrection Sunday your healing and liberating power. So God, right now, as this word goes forward, I want you to get me out of the way. So as your people hear my voice, they hear you. As they see me, Lord, they see you high and lifted up. Now, Lord, if you will, let the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we declare and pray. Let the church say amen. And why don't you put your hands together and let's let everybody from downtown, uptown, South Dallas, North Dallas, hear our praise to God. We praise God on this Sunday morning for your presence here at St. Luke Community United Methodist Church. We just hold in court here at Clyde Warren Park. We done made it our our home away from home on this Sunday morning. And to those who are our guests, our visitors, thank you for joining and worshiping with us. We are trying to make sure you stay safe, socially distanced, as you can tell. And we are so grateful to God for your presence on this Sunday morning. I believe our DS, uh, Deborah Mason's in the house or out in the park. So I want to welcome you and your family. There she is in the back. Good to see you. Give it up to our DS from the North Texas Conference. 
<clears throat> and I want to thank Jacoby for reading our scripture this morning. And, and, and yeah, why don't y'all just give it up to the praise, our sacred dance ministry here at, at St. Luke. And, and for those of you who don't know, we literally have young ladies to seasoned saints. There are two people dancing today who are 82 years old. <laughs> Multi-generational. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And I want to thank our team for organizing this festive, this holy worship moment. There was a whole lot of coordination that went into it, and I want to thank Everyone who's played a role in making this happen. I don't want to start calling names. I'll get in trouble. But everybody, you know who you are. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I want us, it's, you heard the scripture read today. I want us to consider this thought as our homiletical springboard into today's text. And it's this. It's a question. What is standing in your way? What's standing in your way? I want you to turn to the person Next to you, keep your mask on and just ask them, what's standing in your way? And if there's somebody else on the other side of you, ask them, what's standing in your way? You remember how eloquently Jacoby read the Scripture. He said that there were the Marys going to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. And as they were making their way to the tomb, what was the question they asked? Who will roll the stone away? And you need to understand the stone symbolizes, it represents what stands, what can stand in your way and in my way. And I just want to acknowledge on this Sunday morning that there are some, some big stones. There are some medium-sized stones. There are some small stones. And then there are some stones that you can't see. But you know what? Somebody knows that if you get one of these in your foot, in your shoe, it's uncomfortable. It takes you off focus. It becomes more of a challenge than some of the big stones. And so I want you, my brothers and my sisters, to recognize what is standing in your way. The stones represent what's standing in our way. And I want us to just think about three, three things about how the stones or what's standing in our way represent what's standing in the way of what I classify as societal progress, y'all. What's standing in the way of society moving forward. Jesus in John, the 17th chapter, he prays to his father and asks God for unity between the two of them. Then Jesus transitions and begins to pray for his disciples and ask for them and humanity between he and between Jesus and humanity. And then Jesus turns and says, I want all of humanity to be unified. That, that's Jesus' prayer. What is it that's standing between societal progress? What's standing between us getting along? What's standing between us? And I just want to acknowledge racism is one of those things that continues to stand between what community progress, between societal progress. I want to also acknowledge on this Sunday morning that sexism still stands between some of our progress. I want to also acknowledge, my brothers and my sisters, the fear of the other. Folk don't look like you, don't smell like you, don't speak your language, don't have your culture. The, the fear of the other creates tribalism. We alienate people for their orientation. And I stop by to tell you this Sunday morning, we need to address the, those things that stand in the way of societal progress. 
And I want to highlight something. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going, th this is not political, so I want to be very clear. But it is spiritual and it is godly. I want to ask you a question. What is the goal of a democracy? Is it not to embrace and include all of its citizens? All of its citizens should be participating if we're talking about a real genuine democracy. Everyone should be able to participate. So I'm trying to understand why would we, would we not then want to uh, increase options for people to vote? Would we not want, not restrict, but elevate opportunities? Maybe even create a national holiday on election day. Wow, great idea. But, but I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, so why is there an effort to reduce voter participation? Business insider, not a liberal, not a conservative, just a business magazine makes this point in a recent publication. More, you are more likely to be struck by lightning than committing voter fraud. Let, let me say this. They, they point out less than 0.0007% of the people commit voter fraud. But let's just be real. The reason that there is an effort to reduce the number of voters is because there are those who are intoxicated with power and control and they want to stand in the way of societal progress. But I stopped by to tell you this Sunday morning that the stone was rolled away. So what stands also in the way of personal potential and promise? Don't you know that God made all of us with potential and promise? I don't care from what neighborhood you come from. I don't care the color of your skin. I don't care what your, your last name is. God made us all with promise and potential. But there are some things that can stand between us and that promise and potential. And I just want you to understand, sometimes it's, it's not the, the big stones. It's the little stones that can stand between us and our potential. So if pastor, it, if that stone, let me get it, it's in my foot. And y'all know what happens when you try to walk around and something's in your foot. It gets uncomfortable. It gets frustrating. You know what? You may have had a cool walk, but it's not cool anymore. And I want us to understand that there are, ooh, hold on, y'all. <laughs> See, sometimes you, you, you got to not be cool to get rid of some stones. Sometimes you got to get on your knees to get rid of some stones. Sometimes you got to throw your hands up in the air and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee, for there is no other help I know to get rid of some stones. Let, let, let me say this. I, know, I knew a guy who came from a very wealthy family here in Dallas. And if I call the last name, you know. And he and, I, he and I became good friends. And as a kid, he had access to all the resources, went to all the right schools, had everything sort of placed at his feet. But understand, there was something that stood in his way from his promise and potential. And you know what? We need to be mindful of what we say and speak into the lives of our children. Because as a kid, he would always come up with an idea. And his family members, again, this is somebody, if, if he wanted to, to get to the president, he could make that happen. He came from that kind of lineage. And so he said every time he'd come up with an idea, one of his family members would say, what are you thinking? They would, you know, you give them that look like, what is that? I mean, they, they, they sort of broke him down. And, and, and in many ways, he felt undervalued and felt like he could not. And so every time, 
in life, he went to do something, aspired, had an idea. He would always hear in the back of his head, that don't make sense. What are you thinking? And think about this, somebody who had all the resources, somebody who could pick up the phone and call anybody, had access. He could never finish because he had some stones. He had some things that stood in his way that kept him from his promise, kept him from his potential. And I just want to say to somebody on this Sunday morning, God's got promise and potential for you, and it's in you. And we're going to roll some stones away. We're going to get some things out of the way so that you can walk, so that you, I'm about to jump off this stage, so you can jump into your promise and into the place and the destiny that God has for you. I want to affirm that right now. Put your hands together. If you believe that that promise, that potential, it's all for you. And most importantly, most importantly, what stands in the way of your spiritual growth. See, we like that promise and potential. We, we want to deal with societal progress. But I want to ask you, what stands in the way of your spiritual growth? Because those women, they did not go to, they didn't go to a flea market to, to get a, a good buy. They didn't get up early on that Sunday morning to go to a job interview. They got up early to go to the tomb to love on a dead Jesus, y'all. We have a risen Savior. We don't want to show up to love on him. They went to, a, to the tomb to anoint his body, to love on Jesus and to serve Jesus. So what stands in the way of you loving and serving Jesus? I need you to ponder that. I need you to think about that. I need you to wrestle with that. I need you to be honest with God about it. You can, you can, you can look at me and tell me one thing. But you need to, you know, within your spirit and with yourself what you need to do when it comes to loving Jesus and loving others. And I want you to understand, if you can get what stands in the way of your spiritual growth, if you can get it out of the way, don't miss this. When, then you can tap into the power to overcome the stones that are in the way of your personal potential, and societal process. Let me say that one more time. If you can get the stones that stand in the way of your spiritual growth, that will allow you to overcome the stones that stand in your way personally, those stones that stand in the way of societal progress. So, Pastor Butler, yeah, Richie, what's the... Easter message for 2020. Don't miss this, I'm finished. The women got up early that morning. They made their way to the tomb. Two things occurred. One, the stone was rolled away and there was an empty tomb. So, you ready to shout? Here's your shout. The stone represents God's purpose, and the tomb represents Jesus' power. Let me break that down. The stone represents God's purpose, the tomb, Jesus' power. Don't miss this. The, the stone representing God's purpose. See, y'all need to understand, sometimes stone, God puts some stones in our lives for a purpose. I know y'all don't want to hear that, because understand, when those women got to the tomb, you need to understand why the stone was rolled into the, in front of the tomb in the first place. It was there to protect the body of Jesus. See, there were some thieves who could have come at night and taken the body out. That's why they had to put a big stone in place because sometimes God will bring some big stones into your life because he knows he's got to protect you from some folk. He's got to protect you from some danger seen and unseen. So the stones in our lives represent purpose. See, God has a reason for what is standing in your way. You know, sometimes it's protection. Sometimes 
It's positioning, and sometimes it's preparation. I don't know where you are, but understand those stones sometimes in your life to protect you. Sometimes in there in your life to position you. Sometimes they're in your life to simply prepare you. When I was, y'all know I love to tell football stories. So when I was a freshman at SMU, I had a coach who made my life a living hell. Somebody got a boss. <laughs> Somebody work in a situation where you feel like it's a living hell. My freshman year was a living hell. And it was really tied to a coach. You know, we lost games. That, that's not what wore me down. It was that coach that wore me down so much. So I wanted to transfer. Now, I, I didn't want to transfer. I wanted to leave SMU and just go to UT and just be a student. Forget football. That's how bad it was for me. And so at some point, one of my teammates, he said, my mother wants me to, because everybody knew I was struggling. He said, my mama wants to uh, give this word to you. You can either deal with that coach here or you can deal with him later because maybe God is just positioning him in your life. He's put him in your, in your way. He's standing in your way to prepare you. And I want you to know, when I look back, I don't know about you, but when I look back and I realize that that coach was in a place in my life to position me, to prepare me. It made me a better football player, but I want you to know it may be a better person. See, I can deal with some, some crazy folk now. I, I can deal with some mean folk. I can deal with some honorary folk. I can deal with folk who don't have my best interest because I have to deal with that early in life. God will put some stones in your way because of purpose. Now, I'm finished on this. The tomb. The empty tomb represents God's, Jesus' power. Now, y'all, that right there is celebratory. Jesus' power represented because of the tomb. The empty tomb confirms Jesus' power and authority. You know what that means? No matter how big the stone is, big, medium, small, tiny, no matter what size it is, you need to understand on this Resurrection Sunday that Jesus' empty tomb confirms that he has power, power to overcome, power to get past, power to subdue, power to make right. An empty tomb confirms Jesus' power that whatever is standing in your way, that you have power and authority to roll it, power and authority. Jesus has power and authority to move it. Jesus has power and authority if he wants to, to simply explode it. If he wants to, he has power and authority. And don't miss this. He not only has power and authority, but sometimes God will grant you that power and authority to roll it yourself. He'll grant you the power and authority to climb over. some stones. He'll grant you the power and the authority to jump over some stones. He'll grant you the power and authority to give you a strategy to move around the stone. See, some of y'all trying to figure out how I'm going to get through this stone. If you just let the Lord lead you and guide you, he'll give you a strategy. Richie, move right. Richie, move right again. Richie, go forward and keep stepping. I got you past the stone. But sometimes we've got to understand that God will give you the power and the authority. And in some instances, he'll just give you the power and authority to be still and wait on him. Now, that's the hardest thing of all, to be still and to wait on God. But I stop by to tell you that this empty tomb is our confirmation. And y'all know confirmations are important, right? Because you would not have gotten into East the Park if you did not have your confirmation. You can't access your bank information if you don't have confirmation. If you go buy a plane ticket, your record locator is your confirmation. I stopped by to tell you this Sunday morning, 
We have confirmation in life. It's an empty tomb. I know you're battling some cancer. You're battling an illness. You're battling challenges. But I want, you, I want to point you to an empty tomb. That's your confirmation. I know you are emotionally tapped out. But I want to point you to an empty tomb. That's your confirmation. I know you're tired and you want to give up. But I'm pointing you to an empty tomb that affirms that's your confirmation. I know that we are trying, trying to figure out if we're going to ever experience justice and equality for all, but I'm pointing to an empty tomb. That's our confirmation. You've lost some loved ones. You've lost some things in this pandemic, but I've stopped by to tell you there is an empty tomb. It's your confirmation. Your confirmation. Jesus got up. I'll say that one more time. Jesus got up. That's your confirmation on this Sunday morning. He got up. In Mark's chapter, it puts it this way. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where he lay. That's your confirmation. If that's not enough for you, I'm going to go to Matthew 28. It says, there was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going into the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. But he is not here. He has risen just as he said he would. Jesus is up. Jesus got up. We've got an empty tomb to confirm his power and authority. And check this out, that power and authority. He will transfer to, to you. I need you to know that this Sunday morning, to you, my brother, my sister, to you on this day. And you need to understand this. You know the difference between Jesus' resurrection? Because I, I went and did some research. There are a whole lot of people who have died and were resurrected. You know, they've had a, a, a death experience. They died for minutes, maybe some hours, but they got up. Lazarus, he died. He stayed in a tomb for three, four days. He was resurrected. So what's the difference between Jesus' resurrection? I'm glad you asked me because the Bible says when, when Jesus got up, he got up with all power in heaven and in earth was simply in his hands. See, that's the difference. Jesus didn't get up the same. Jesus got up with all power, and that means you have access to that power. So whatever you're going through, you've got access to that power. You've got access to his love. You've got access to his glory. You've got access to his deliverance. You've got access to his healing. You have access to his salvation on this Resurrection Sunday. You've got access because Jesus has risen, and there is an empty grave to confirm that fact. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on this Sunday morning for this word, for your resurrecting power that you got up. So God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for decisions that need to be made on this Sunday morning. What stands in our way? We want to address it because God, we want to walk in alignment and we want to be in your will and in your way. And we thank you right now that you got up. We thank you right now that you provide us a confirmation, an empty tomb. God, we know your power. And God, we want to claim it for our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You're here on this Sunday morning, this Resurrection Sunday. This word has gone forward here at Clyde Warren Park. I want to offer three things to you, my brother and my sister. First of all, I want to offer Jesus Christ. That means if you've never confessed with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised his son, Jesus, from the dead, you have salvation. That's all you have to do is confess it and believe it. You're saved. The second thing I want to offer to you this Sunday morning, that is if you do not have a church, not connected to a community, a body of believers, 
I want to offer St. Luke Community United Methodist Church as a place for you to call home on this Sunday morning. The third thing is I want you to know we want to pray with you and for you. And so if you stand in one of those three positions, you've never accepted Jesus. You need a church. You need prayer. We're going to have members from our prayer team down front. We'll make sure we're socially distanced from you. But if you want to come on this Sunday morning, man, what a day to dedicate. What a day to commit yourself on this Resurrection Sunday. You'll never forget it. You, you said, I did it at Clyde Warren Park today. So come, my brother and my sister today. Come today. Come to you. Come. 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 He has for me. Come. We'll wait on you till Sunday. If you're watching us virtually, go into the chat or email us at we care at slcumc.org if you want to become part of our church. You need prayer. Oh, Jesus went to Calvary to save. That's love. That's love. Jesus went. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me. For me, he died. That's love. That's love. Give God some praise today. We thank God on this day for the decisions that have been made. This is not just Resurrection Sunday, it's First Sunday, Communion Sunday. So I believe everyone who entered received a packet and in there there is communion elements if you want to take that out as we prepare for communion here's our innovate invitation to holy communion I have our executive pastor pastor Linda Mayberry joining me for communion amen Jesus calls us and invites us to join him at his table Let's take our places. We accept our Lord's invitation, and we come with joy to the table of the Lord. We come, we come to, to Christ's, Christ's table as, as his invited and most, most precious gift. gift. Glory, Glory be, to, be God. to God. Hear this prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess we have often 
that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as Christ loved us, where we have pledged loyalty to our loved ones with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, and denied them. Forgive us, we pray, and by your Spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy, living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has Christ died, died, Christ, Christ is has risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen and now as children of faith let us join in together with the lord's prayer our, our father, father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. As Jesus gave the bread to his disciples and said, eat but this is my body that was broken for you. That's what we will do. Then he took the wine, gave it to them, and he said, let us drink, for this is my blood that was shed for you. Let us drink. Let the church say, amen. Calvary. The blood. The blood that gives me strength from
together. Give God some praise. Yeah, it'll never lose. <clears throat> we praise God. As we prepare to, to leave this worship experience, I want to make you mindful of a few things happening. I want Pastor Nuke real quick to talk about the X factor. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, we are excited. We are excited about what's taking place at St. Luke. And right now we have the X Factor program that is going to launch on uh, next Sunday. It is an opportunity for us to come together with our young adults. And we are excited about it. Are there any young adults out there? Oh, come on now. Are there any young adults out there? Listen, I think they're all up on the stage, Pastor. But listen, we would love for you to show, your, uh, to show up on, uh, on our check-in on the April 11th via Zoom. Uh, there is a registration link that will go out for you to be able to do that. And we will be excited to receive you, to see you, and to fellowship with you. Is that all right? All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, specifically, we're targeting those who are recently graduated from high school, so probably 18, 19, or 23. <laughs> 26, Pastor. 26, 26, 20, 26. Because that group is what we call an X. They're trying to figure some things out. They're in college. They're maybe in trade school, but we want to connect with you next Sunday. So please join us. Also, I want you to know that our anniversary is coming up. It's 88 years here at St. Luke. We're excited. <laughs> Bishop Vashti McKenzie will be our preacher. For our anniversary celebration, we will celebrate, we will serve, we will pray, and we will march. And amen, that weekend as we celebrate our church's anniversary. And then next Saturday, if you have not gotten your vac vaccination, we set you up back in March to be vaccinated. We set you up on Friday to be vaccinated, but you have a chance this coming Saturday to get vaccinated at UT, in partnership with UT Southwestern at Redberg Mall. So go to the website and sign up for our vaccination Saturday event. Amen. We want to make sure that we get plenty of shots in arms. All right, church. And also the last thing I want to say, and that is as you prepare to depart, y'all know this costs something, right? Amen. <laughs> so we want you to continue to support the ministry of this church. But also remember, we launched our housing relief fund. And that housing relief fund is to evert evictions. And our goal is to... We want to commit to at least 50000 on the part of St. Luke. And we're, going to, we're inviting other congregations and communities of faith to be in partnership with us to make sure that as the moratorium ends, that we, that we keep families and people housed and sheltered. So please, if you're a guest, you're welcome to support that as you leave. And you can go to our website. You can go in different ways for you. If you go to our website, you can uh, uh, give that way. Uh, electronically, or as you walk out, there will be baskets available, and they can instruct you on how you can give and support our housing relief fund, because we want to make sure that we celebrate the resurrection, but we also want to make sure that we support God's people so they can continue to experience life the way God intended for all of us to have it life and have it more abundantly. So I leave this with you, my brothers. Oh, April birthdays. Who's I'm sorry, anybody, birthday in April, April, April. Throw your hand if you have a birthday in April. We celebrate April birthdays this Sunday morning. Awesome, awesome. Happy birthday to you. I leave this with you, my brothers and my sisters. It's Resurrection Sunday. And when those women got to the tomb, thinking they were going to anoint a dead Jesus, 
they realized two things. Their question was answered. Who will roll the stone away? The stone was rolled away. It affirms that God has purpose in what's standing in your way. The other thing they realized, that there was an empty tomb. And I want you to know, that empty tomb confirms that God has all power in heaven and earth wrapped up in his hands. I want you to grab it. I want you to walk in it. And I want you to know it for yourself. So go in peace and be blessed. Thank you.